Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of High Minded with McCarter. I'm McCarter. I'm SK, her co host. On today's episode, we had Zane Marsh, a mushroom expert who um, is new to Colorado, and he informed us a lot about growing mushrooms and Initiative 58, also known as the Natural Health Medicine Act, coming up on this November's ballot. As you listen, it is the one legalizing, not the initiative trying to decriminalize. Unfortunately, that one did not make it on the ballot. So Yes, we just did some research following up on the things we talked about with Zane about a week week or two ago and wanted to clarify because there were some things. There's two things that were going to be on the ballot, but now only one initiative passed, which would um, is still great. So we encourage you if you're in Colorado, vote yes on Initiative 58, which would legalize psilocybin on a state level and allow uh, people to open up medical clinics specifically for psilocybin therapy. So still very exciting, but we wanted to clarify that at the beginning. And yeah, Zane is amazing. I actually met him at the dog park. Super (laughs) fun connection. We both love mushrooms and dogs. So it was a great friendship from the start. And he's probably going to do some dog training on my dog now too. (laughs) But uh, we, yeah, with dogs, we talked about him wanting to train dogs to um, basically smell and forage for certain types of mushrooms, which I thought was incredible and is like such the future. We always talk about having your own farm at home and like growing your own medicine. And I feel like that's just another like aspect of that lifestyle is like having animals that can like find mushrooms for you. Yeah. He was talking about like teaching them to find that cancer curing component of the mushroom and they just seek that out. So cool. Amazing. Yeah. The future is mushrooms and it's so cool to talk to people who are in the future. (laughs) Yeah. So he actually came from Ohio. So, you know, we're all transplants. I'm from Missouri SK Kentucky. So it was, uh, you know, great to talk to another person from the Midwest that's coming out here to Colorado, kind of seeking more liberties with growing types of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So we're really, really excited that this is going to be on the ballot, although psilocybin is already decriminalized in Denver, Mm -hmm. which is great. But this is next, next level. Next level. Yeah. Leveling up. But yeah, with that, we also talk about systems coming in and trying to control and, you know, get in on, like, the ground level and, like, basically control people and what they do with these medicines. So it's interesting of, like, finding the balance. You know, like, Big Pharma is researching psilocybin. Yeah, they have the synthetic psilocybin that they test. Yeah, Big Pharma's already trying to make their own psilocybin equivalent, which is nuts. But even more important why we need to keep fighting for this natural medicine So I just feel like Zane was like a great conversation, just more about the movement and people growing their own mushrooms at home and just spreading that knowledge and getting back to like community base of helping each other out. But um, shout out to today's episode sponsor, Randy's Resin Red. If you're familiar with Randy's name already, you might be because they invented the wired rolling paper all the way back in 1975. So you didn't have to use a filter or like a tip. You would just roll the wire. Yeah. So Or we, a roach clip. Yeah, it's like basically the original roach clip. Exactly. Thank yeah. you, SK. <laughs> but yeah, we love Randy's and they just came out with a new resin guard, which is basically better than water for any of your water pipes. We just hit it with the bong and it was super clean, super fresh. And it the bong looks so clear. It's amazing. Yeah. Check them out at randys.com or on Instagram at Randy's Wired. And as always, check us out um, on any podcast listening app, YouTube, our website. Subscribe, follow, review. Please all the things. give us great reviews. We would love that. <laughs> we're putting out these great episodes for y'all and we're just trying to keep it going and we would really love some feedback. That would mean the world to us. And yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at McCarter Gets High. Our Instagram is at High Minded Pod. My Instagram is Her Highness SK. Oh, and our website is High Minded Podcast.com. And we're doing a lot of work on there. So uh, yeah, come check check, out. Check it out, man. 
or whoever you are, not a man. Do you think guys is offensive? Like gender? I've been trying not to say guys. Okay. Anymore. Hmm. That's why I say y'all. I always do the y'all. So this is a public service amount announcement. I don't know. I'm I'm not decided I'm, on guys. I try not to be gender specific anymore for, with anything. That's why I was like, shoot, don't say man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so y'all. Humans. You humans listening. Peace be with you. <laughs> and as always, stay, stay high. high. I'm Zane Marsh. I just moved out here from Ohio. I uh, studied psychology and neuroscience at Miami University. And right after that, I was a bar manager, but <laughs> quickly had a mushroom business that was growing in Ohio for gourmets and medicinal mushrooms. You know, your nutraceuticals, not necessarily like your psilocybin mushrooms. Mm. And then as I moved out <laughs> uh, from Ohio, I became a dog trainer out here. And so I'm really fascinated with like the mind, the behavior, but also like all the biology that goes into mushrooms and medicines and stuff like that. So Yeah, I love that we met at the dog park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, where I was com- complimenting your mushroom socks. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's yeah. very exciting. And I was like, well, we got to have you on. Yeah. We're all about plant medicine, or obviously fungi is not a plant, but yeah. um, and like natural medicine, you know. Um, and we're both kind of in the cannabis industry, but experiment also with psilocybin a lot, but also like love like lion's mane, turkey tail. You're really into chaga. So we just like want to basically learn everything we can. Yeah. <laughs> from that's that's cool where, people. Yeah. And that's honestly where I was kinda at. You know, I graduated college, didn't really know what to do. And I that senior year I really got into fungi and I was like, no one knows anything about this. We have one professor that was teaching and that was like rare <laughs> among yeah, universities. Like gift, yeah. It really is. So I sat down and talked with him and you know got to learn a lot and this and my brother was a botanist actually. You know, he studied nice. botany and he had no clue about anything. Oh. <laughs> so that that was kind of odd to me. And I grew yeah. up on a farm, you know, my dad was a gardener, everything. And, I, and wow. here there was this world that wasn't even touched upon. Yeah, they weren't even exploring it at all. Yeah. And so that's kind of what made my leap into it. And that's kind of cool. why I'm so interested in it now, just because it's such an integral part of everything that living yes. that we don't even realize what's beneath our feet sometimes. Absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. We've heard some really for some really cool people that have made me just like totally appreciate the earth and the soil and everything and like the, the mycelial, yeah, the all. mycelial <laughs> network and how yeah. everything is connected just in such a different way. So. I mean, we want to know everything you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then share that knowledge, obviously. Definitely. What was your specialty, I guess? Oh, uh, well, I was at first mainly interested in growing it because, you know, besides a typical portobello, white button mushrooms, you didn't see many mushrooms. And so I didn't really know that other types were even like cultivatable. Like, so I just started getting into like, oh, how do you grow shiitakes? How do you grow lion's mane, reishi, chaga? Well, you can't grow chaga, but. You know, so on and so forth. And that was pretty cool for me because, you know, by looking at all the things you can grow, each thing has a different environment, different context for living and what, you know, facilitates their growth. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of floored me into like going out in the woods and, you know, see what was really out there because there's so much that we didn't know. And like when I was reading like Paul Stamets' book, there's only like a list of a (laughs) hundred. Yeah, like there's only a list of like a hundred species that are like, no, candidates no. for yeah. like cultivation. I'm yeah. like, I'm sitting here as like a biology guy. I'm like, how do we not know how to do more of that? And especially when we have like brassica plants that are like <laughs> literally half of what goes into grocery stores. And, you know, we can't even cultivate 50 different types of mushrooms. That seems wild to me. <laughs> Wait, how can we not? We just haven't studied them yet. Wow. You know, we haven't gotten there. You know, we're just getting our fungariums and like a lot of people, like citizen kind of. Scientists like me just go out into the woods, you know, we culture different things that no one's grown. We figure out how to grow them and we study the ecology, like how they grow. And, you know, we're kind of pushing science in that way because there's just not that much out there yet. Wow. So do you just take the spores 
um, agar and yeah, agar, um, all sorts of different types of ways. Yeah, I mean, I can take a little clone of it actually. So if okay, I actually you can dry them out and they'll actually like technically be dead. But you put them onto like nutrients and water, and they'll start growing again. So they're like Whoa. these really versatile kind of cool <laughs> things. Exactly, and like and that's why I started cultivating. And you're like, this is so crazy. Like, wow, that's so yeah. wild. So yeah. Do you have like a microscope, and you're like yeah. examining that kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, I work in front of a float hood that's like completely sterile air and everything, and I do spore isolations and combinations and. Yeah, and you can take, you know, certain species within a genus but are different species and, like, try and breed them to get mm-hmm. a get a crossbreed or a hybrid. Wow. And so, yeah, you start to do really cool things. Like, say you have a white and a gold mushroom or, like, one that has, like, really uh, robust stem that's, yeah. like, really soft. So you can cross those and get the characteristics you want. So, what's wow. the best cross you've ever, like, it, what's your masterpiece cross? <laughs> uh, I, just, uh, I just basically do it for – like volume, like I want to be able to get the most productivity out of a strain. Okay. So most of mine are just like oyster strain and so on so forth. But, you know, there's some cool ones out there, like the black pearl king, you know, that's like a king oyster and a pearl, pearl oyster yeah. hybrid Whoa. together. You know, and like I said, it has this really, really robust stem. But, you know, kings are kind of harder. I mean, if you had a king oyster, you have no. to like really sear them for a while to okay. actually get that kind of texture. But once you get them right, it's perfect. So they took the softer texture of the pearl oyster, combined oh, it with okay. the king oyster. Whoa. And so you have this really big, plump mushroom that's perfect. Yeah, so yeah umami. Yeah, just great. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, you know, Yum. It, yeah, it's kind of invigorating to see like all that we could do and how little we know. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, like, <laughs> what do you know about what we could do with mushrooms, basically, in the future of with that technology? You know, there's there's so much. There's so so much because I mean, if you think about it, we have byproducts waste all the time, and you know, for 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 fertility and soil, that has to be broken down. And yeah. like, we are really wasteful, and that that's the biggest thing for me is like we are not creating feedback loops in our uh, society, basically to actually utilize all the energy that's there, you know, we print paper, totally. then it's like, yeah, we recycle it. But for the most part, it's just, it just sits there. Yeah. You know, it goes to, we're not purposely doing anything with it, you know, right. through all this like cardboard and stuff that we package stuff in, we could get hundreds of pounds of food Yeah. while making fertile soil and then, you know, go so on and so forth. So mm-hmm. like, totally. I think that's just like the magnitude that we really need to get in turn, like, in line with is like how can we use this as a food system yeah and as a way to create biodiversity for other food systems that we have in place now like we're just not thinking of it as like a full circle yeah it's, <laughs> it's like very compartmentalized ends, it's like yeah it's very compartmentalized line. like oh yeah this goes to store that's it like boom boom right. boom you get what you want then you throw out <laughs> all your trash and someone else deals with it yeah exactly yeah. 20, it's years. such like an american mentality it really is I feel like yeah consumerism is really it's our religion and, here in America. <laughs> well, it makes money. <laughs> exactly. And that's our real religion here in America. <laughs> Capitalism. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're doped up on success, which and nowadays is money. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's probably one of the things that's keeping us from getting there. It's really easy to not think of how efficient these systems are because mm-hmm. of how much money you're going to lose to the fungal system because, you know, you're not producing the, like the mon- monopoly of bell of mushrooms anymore. Yeah. You know, there's not that little... What do you know of the monopoly of fellow mushrooms? <laughs> Wait, yeah. I am always hearing, so, like, yeah. little whispers about this. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to go too much into the folklore. Okay. <laughs> I, okay. I'm not, I don't know too much, to be quite honest, either. Uh, I will say that a lot of what Paul statements, if that's what you're referring yeah. to, does tell a tall tale sometimes. So. Okay, okay. But it is true that, you know, it's really easy for these companies to monopolize these products because, I mean, when I first got into it, you know, when I'm trying to make a living, I just charge, you know, $10 a pound. But how do I do that when people overseas or even in America are charging two bucks because they are the only ones that grow, grow it? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and this is where, like, bringing people into the actual industry is going to make a big difference. Yeah. Because now they're not going to want the portobello mushrooms because they're actually crap. You know, they don't taste as good as the lion's mane, the shiitake, the mayatake, the, even the cordyceps. Yeah. Like I've heard all these... you have to cook them for like 15 minutes for them to even be like good yeah. for you. Like, oh, yeah. Not well, yeah. toxic. Exactly. And that's kind of like chicken in the woods. Same thing with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, you know, things right. we don't know. <laughs> mm, right. Yeah. And we just kind of take it for the way it is. Yeah. Because anytime Paul Stamets mentions it, he's like, 
I, I've gotten death threats about <laughs> this. Like, I can't actually publicly talk about it, but yeah. oh my God. there's a problem in yeah. Portobello. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's definitely not too far. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not a leap of faith to think of, think of that because – you know, like Monsanto and all the uh, Monsanto. Oh, yeah. I'm like from St. This. Louis, so the Monsanto is, like, that's where they're, like, based. Yeah. Oh, really? I yeah. mean, it's mm-hmm. definitely like a thing. There's plant. a lot of big money in food. Huge, huge money. Huge money. Yeah. Like, that yeah. is one thing that we're always going to need. And now time for a quick commercial break. Big shout out today to our episode sponsor, Randy's. They make this new resin guard that is better than water for any of your water pipes or bongs. We just hit it out of the bong and it was so great, so smooth, and the bong is looking so clear. Better than water for sure. Super clean, very fresh. Incredible. We also love their original products, which are the wired rolling paper so you don't have to use a tip or filter check them out at randys.com or at randys wired on instagram how else do you think we can like solve our problem with the soil and like basically reverse what we've been doing i feel like yeah i mean i i wish people i mean it's so easy it's just to do something with your own trash like it's so easy to actually instead of so like compost yeah but like not even that like instead of putting it in the compost bin and like having them take it like do something with it yourself like imagine of all imagine all the like everyone has like garbage a trucks thing. well garbage trucks imagine all the emissions from garbage oh, trucks yeah. alone mm-hmm. just collect your trash and then you justify it as if that was a good thing but then you know yeah, it just puts the problem elsewhere, yeah. and then it yeah. sits there. Yeah, so I actually lived in, like, one of the biggest uh, school districts in Ohio, and they told us that every single day they our buses drive all the way to California and back per bus route. Right. And I'm, I'm just thinking, like, what? that's a taxing amount of energy to yeah. for one school district. And, that, and just think about the garbage. <laughs> So imagine if we could actually do something with our garbage instead of, you know, adding all these extra steps for our food system. That's the real problem is we're adding steps for no good reason. Why do we need to? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe we could just have a local farmer that, you know, we got it from. And not to say, like, conveniency isn't bad. It's good, but to to what degree? (laughs) I know. Yeah, it's like trying to fix a problem but making more problems. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's really nice to be able to go to the grocery store and get seaweed, but, like, you know, what's the cost of getting seaweed or a mango or an avocado here? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's, like, Like, how much energy did it take to get to us? Yeah, so I think, like, that's probably, I mean, the simplest thing I tell people is start near. What Mm -hmm. can you do every single day that change not only your life but make a small impact? You know, mm-hmm. is it turning the porch light off? Is it like composting into your garden, making a garden, you know, yeah. having a mushroom log and like recycling in a more effective way like I was talking Wait, how about? Do you, what's a mushroom log? Well, just like inoculating a mushroom or a log with mushroom mycelium. Oh. Like shiitakes grow on that. Yeah. Stuff. Like I want to do that. Yeah. You well, can buy them online. Exactly. I'm. Okay. I'm probably or gonna have a. Them. Yeah, I'm gonna have a mushroom shop at, at some point. I, I kind of. Can need you to hook get, me up? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, all. Why about. haven't you started doing mushroom stuff here yet? I guess. Well, I didn't. Or expe- to what level are you doing? That yeah. To? Yeah. Sorry. You know, I, I. I didn't expect to get into dog training when I got here. Oh, okay. So I've been developing that business, but I'm finally getting in the place where I because I, I really do enjoy growing things and stuff like that. So in the near future, I think I'm probably gonna do a workshop because. It helps so much to, instead of having to go to the grocery store, having the knowledge just to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. That's so nice. It's so, so nice. And especially when it comes into, like, the future when this could be our medicine. Yeah. You know, how, imagine of all the problems that we would be able to diminish when you don't have to fill that script every 30 days. That takes $50 to $100 away from you, however much it may be. Yeah. yeah, That's a pretty phenomenal difference. That's what I'm doing right now is, like, weaning off of my antidepressants yeah because i don't want to be doing that and like dependent upon like pharmaceutical industry yeah. um but yeah i do microdose psilocybin nice. like what do you know about psilocybin yeah a good amount what do you want to know <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah anything about like how it interacts with our brain and can help with like yeah. neurogenesis and yeah it's a super cool drug very very cool drug 
uh, first, uh, how do you like microdosing? Do you microdose too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, how do you guys like it? Because I always want to hear what people have to say because everyone's different. I really I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Um, I've tried like different protocols. Um, intuitive microdosing, I think, is where I'm at now. Yeah. Um, just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Take yeah, a cab a yeah. <laughs> um, That's what I'm doing definitely right now too. Yeah. The protocol was actually really nice though. I did a month of like th- four days on, three days off. Um, it on it that month was great like in retrospect looking back where I was at the whole time elevated (laughs) elevated it was just like less anxious like just worry free in a way um so that was great but I love doing it when I'm like about to have to do a task that I don't want to (laughs) do I always say when yeah, I'm cleaning my cleaning. bathroom, yeah. Yeah. it's my least favorite task, and literally every time it yeah, just makes it. courage in another way. <laughs> it just, yeah, it's just some kind of like. It makes you think about it, yeah, in a different way, I yeah, feel like. definitely. It's, it's just a task. It's oh, like yeah. when I'm done with this task, I'll move on to the next next task. It's like. You're not like dreading it as much mm-hmm. like yeah. on when we're microdosing. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. to, to go right into the brain chemistry, that's a great point because, you know, it's it suppresses you know, our default mode network, which mm-hmm. is us thinking about ourselves. And so those tasks oh. that we come to dread are like, in you know, like rumination, you know, when you ruminate yeah. over an idea, very common in anxiety and depression, that's what happens. Like, oh, I really don't want to clean the dishes. Oh, I could be doing this. What? And so we go through all the it's ideas. It's like resentment. Exactly. And, the, and so wow. when we finally... And, you know, a lot of people say that uh, mushrooms, like, excite the brain, but it actually suppresses that network. So when we're so caught up in everything, living our everyday lives, thinking about the future, the past, how others think of us, uh, what our jobs are, and so on, that's always activating. And so for a moment, we get to suppress that. And it gives us a new perspective that, you know, what it's like to not think for a second, which is kind of wild to think that most people don't know what that's like. Mm -hmm. To like Whoa. be able to have a second where the internal dialogue stops. Yeah, that's big, <laughs> and yeah. you can actually you know live your life for a second. You know, take a breath. <sighs> Doing dishes <isn't> so <gasps> bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know maybe look at the suds of the water, all the stuff in it, and be like, oh, look how cool this is. Like, and become just be become a grateful. kid again. Like, I feel yeah. like it makes me more grateful for like. Literally being able to turn on the sink and there be fresh, clean water (laughs) coming out of the faucet. Yeah, it just makes me feel really, um, like, interconnected with everything. Like, community, society, I'm all of a sudden... Like, like, the universe. For me, it's like me feeling connected to the universe. (laughs) Yeah, well, I think it's so interesting because, like, our default mode network is, like, us thinking about ourselves, but so often... That's like the ego brain. Yeah, but often it's so negative that we think about that when, yeah. you know, the default mode network should be a part of how we feel part of the world, you know? That should be the default balance. Yeah. You see that whenever that network gets out of balance, you get mental illness, basically. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see how, like, that modulation mm-hmm. really can change a lot about how we see the world, how we see ourselves. Maybe we become part of the world. We belong to the world instead of, you know, making that separation between me and the dishes. Oh, I have to do the dishes. But maybe you see, oh, the dishes have to be done because dinner is going to be on on in 20 minutes and the Mm -hmm. family needs to eat. You know, that's the sense of community that you start to feel. You you see a new relationship with yourself rather than, you know, this Mm -hmm. internalized, very subjective idea of the way things are, you know, the way I think. Or, right. Yeah, and thinking like, the way I think I am, you know. And who decided that, like, the dishes are, like, bad, quote, or, like, annoying or right. dreadful, yeah. I guess. Like, why can't you just recondition your brain and be like, no, th- this is exciting. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. And you can make anything exciting. It kind of reminds me of, like, uh, this Buddhist phrase, if you're going to sweep the floor, sweep the damn floor, give it all your might. Because when you give it everything you got... It's not so bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, have you ever, I don't know, I was like a bar manager. You know, you'd be stuck there till four in the morning, and it sucks. But, man, sometimes you got to dance with the mop to have some fun. And mm-hmm. it takes, you know, and at that second, you know, when you're dancing, you're not thinking about how hard it is. You know, you're living your life in a way that's more pleasant, you know. Yeah. Dancing with it. It's a movement <laughs> rather yeah. than this, like, very structured thing that 
you have to do this, that, and that. And that's like creating less stress, and I feel like it's going to be better for you in the long run. Too. Totally. Yeah, and if you do a good job cleaning at night, then the next morning everything's clean. Like if yeah. you're just asking everything, better. bring on the dopamine. Just yeah, do a good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, well, how does it like interact with dopamine? <laughs> well, that's actually kind of an interesting thing. Uh, I don't think there has been much research on the connections oh. with dopamine. I know LSD has shown some connection with the dopaminergic system. But not so much. <laughs> with, okay. Yeah. Which to me it seems kind of odd, mainly because like dopamine is very involved with like addiction in those systems. Mm-hmm. So like a, if you have a very addictive personality, it's a rewarding. You know, every time you take a hit, it's going to give a surge of dopamine. Uh-huh. And so I'm guessing there's probably some interaction with the default mode network and the dopamine and like how we view ourselves, what is rewarding. Maybe that changes okay. our relationship to it. Yeah. You know? Maybe like for instance, how we how other people view us. Maybe we don't take so much credit in that anymore. And so we have a balanced relationship with it. Okay. And so on. So this default mode network, you know, reaches the different parts of the brain and how we view ourselves. And okay. I think we can slowly change these different relationships within that network to, mm-hmm. you know, which take part in our everyday behaviors. Yeah. You know, do I need to <laughs> constantly have rewards or can I sit for a second and just. Is be- the bigger reward at the end. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Or like you just change to like, what is the reward? Yeah. You know, maybe the reward is to do nothing rather than to always have to do something. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. we're always so caught up in like, oh push yourselves and yeah and as humans i feel like we're always wanting like a reward yeah it's like why dopamine (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i think uh, sometimes what's nice about mushrooms is like you can when you're in that experience you can take it away of like man why do i need this you know why do i care if i do this right now or why do i need this Mm -hmm. or why do i think give that person's thought about me so much value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it brings those things to the surface where, you know, I think this is why it's so effective. Whereas, you know, it's hard for us to sit with those questions. They're like fundamentally uncomfortable. Yeah. Because, you know, we want to be liked. We want to be the perfect person, but sometimes we're just not. And so I think we get, we get to have this experience that allows us to put us in a space that is a little bit more objective. We don't put so much blame on ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think a lot of the blame comes from that default mood network where yeah, or guilt, like blame. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so when we step away from that, you know, you're not blaming yourself, but you're just seeing the patterns for what they are, you know, and it, right. I think that allows us to be more effective moving forward. You know, yeah. if you don't you can't change what you don't see, you know. Yeah. Totally. Especially you can't change things that you want to avoid all the time too. That's the thing. It's like if you feel that guilt, then distraction is kind of like the next. Yeah, yeah. which is probably why cancer patients are great for this. You know, we love running from the idea of death. It's the most scary thing ever. Death is like psychological death is the second scariest (laughs) thing compared to actual death. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So it makes sense that, you know, it puts us in a – a safe place, a comfortable place to ask these questions, to actually learn and inquire about them and to, I guess, our inner self-knowledge, whatever you may call it, you know, mm. whereas, you know, a lot of times we can't ever get to that place. You know, we're always so caught up in what we have to do that it's it's hard to ever detach. Yeah, and it's scary. It's, it's like, scary as shit. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Have you ever experimented or know anything about, like, DMT at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I've never blasted off before, and I, I've had it. I've actually had friends that made it, but it's and I've watched people do it. I find it past. I love, I'm that person that watches people do drugs, just, it's like, sober. <laughs> <laughs> Can you define blasting off for us? Yeah, so I guess, so just to kind of talk about DMT, it's like a, they call it the businessman trip, mm-hmm. basically. It's really quick the smoke. The businessman trip? Yeah, I've, I've, heard never heard, like, I've never heard that. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you <laughs> quick know where I can point. find some businessman? <laughs> I've heard that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Continue. I was like, we have to take a minute. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. How but do I mean, you use your lunch it's hour? it's so quick. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. it's like 15 minutes, right? Yeah, it's like 15 to 20 minutes at the most. And so, wow. you know, if you blast off, like you smoke and you definitely go into this dissociative kind of state. Kind of slight hallucinations in like your periphery and so on, but then uh, <laughs> people watching will kind of like go in this like fish mode, just like kind of <laughs> you just flop out, uh, flop like a fish, and like they're they're clearly just not 
cognizant anymore. They're not self-reflective. There's no ness to consciousness anymore. There's no state of them being there. Uh, they, they're definitely experiencing very much how we experience dreams, but they're not controlling it. You know, I'm, even in same terms of mushrooms and uh, LSD, we know we're experiencing this. Yeah. And we can definitely, like, you know, walk to the room or think in a different way. That DMT experience, I, from what I've seen, seems very different. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And like, have you used it at all personally? I have. I've just never blasted off. So what type of amounts, I guess, like... Uh, you know, I, I was just given some by a friend, so I would just sprinkle okay. it at, on every now and again. And the most I would ever get is kind of like a slight, uh, like I said, periphery hallucination. Mm. Okay. But it did have some very odd dissoci- dissociative, like, feelings. Mm-hmm. Like, I was sitting in a chair by my window just kind of, like, feeling the breeze, but I felt like I was in my living room, which was definitely in the next room over. Oh, uh, So, which, and, like... Yeah, it was kind of. Have you guys ever that like pulled up and then like that, and you feel like there's a pin going through? Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like someone's like stretching your skin to another room, but you're totally in your skin in that seat. Whoa! And it feels really odd. <laughs> I Weird. But and so I can imagine yeah. how odd like a breakthrough would be. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. And I've, I've and I've had breakthroughs on yeah. LSD, like where I've definitely like come out of my body. Same with mushrooms, where I've definitely like. Had no right. cognizant experience so of like what was going on. The ego on. death, quote unquote. Yeah, and definitely a dissolution of. I would say, like the observer. I don't think our ego necessarily dies, but how we view experience, you know, we stop trying to control it, and then rather than we open up to the experience, and it okay. controls us, so to speak. Because a lot of times we re- resist drugs. You know, that's how you can have a bad trip, right? Or whatever. And so when you yeah. actually, you know. Let it do its course. Yeah. Now I end up meditating, and then I fall asleep actually a lot on psychedelics. I fall asleep on mushrooms. All the time. And sometimes they're in my most, like, intense trips uh, just because I'm trying to get to that – not necessarily get to that place, but see what I can find out Mm -hmm. rather than, Mm -hmm. like, trying to resist it. Yeah. Because I think it might be similar to that kind of DMT experience where, like, there's this dissolution, and you can have a different relationship with the world where mm-hmm. it's not so based upon like the subjective I, me, identity, yeah. kind of I, me, mine. But you're like, yeah. oh, I'm not me without any of you or any of this yeah. that, for that matter. Yeah. Didn't you tell me you did some stuff with the government? I sat in on some of the city council meetings, uh, city council meetings for the, uh, the natural medicine. Health. Okay. Initiative. Right. In Boulder. So, yeah. yeah, what can you tell us about that initiative, I guess? It's actually statewide. Yeah, uh, yeah. But we we are having a municipality for yeah. vote in Boulder, too. Okay. So, when you said city council, I was it, the Boulder City Council or the... Well, no, it was just... they. That's what they just called the meeting. It was just like oh. a city council. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, basically, there's two different things. There's a push for legalization, which is kind of similar to the Oregon perspective. Uh, basically, they're going like I think two years until they um, start full decriminalization, and then yeah, and then that's when they're going to actually have clinics open up. You can buy, you can uh, oh, practice, so on. Okay. Uh, whereas the other one on the bout is decrim nature, which is complete decriminalization of like ibogaine. Uh, I, I'm not not ayahuasca. Um, peyote, mushrooms, LSD. Okay. Ketamine. Yeah. And so those are the two basic ones. Um, there's been a lot of... <laughs> yeah, what are the pros and cons, I guess, to both, in your opinion? Are you voting one way or another? Yeah, or- I'll, I will probably vote decrim, to be quite honest. Uh, okay. Just because, you know, we're really impatient. <laughs> and it seems that everything that we've legalized has become a shit show, so to speak. And Colorado is a great example of that in the cannabis, yeah, cannabis it's industry. it's failing right now. Yeah, I mean, it's not doing so hot. Because we you know, gave out too many licenses. Yeah, and we, you know, it's great that we're thinking of legalization and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean we have to do it all at once. Mm-hmm, and yeah. I think a lot of times we shoot ourselves in the foot, and I think yeah. Oregon may have done that already, where they're going to probably have a kind of crappy system because they just wanted to be the first. Oh. It doesn't really matter because if the thing is, if you decriminalize everything, that black market is going to come up into legalization anyway. Mm-hmm. And the people who have been doing it for the longest time aren't going to be, you know, <laughs> get brought into jail anymore. They're not going to be persecuted mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So they actually have the opportunity to make a business out of it. 
that's the biggest thing to me. Because if mm-hmm. we go straight for legalization, who's going to get it? People with money. Yeah. It takes money to make money. So, and a lot of these people, you know, it, it's in the black market. They're not going to have a chance because it's black market money. If you decriminalize, right. though, it gives them an opportunity to actually do something with that. Okay. And, you know, hopefully maybe provides a better way to, to – or maybe we don't even legalize it and just leave it up to the people that are, have been doing it for this long. And I just, just want to see it, like, at the farmer's market, like that mushroom stand that sells oysters that and so, lion's yeah, mane. Like, so yeah, cool. well, and I'm kind of one of those people, like, like I said, I'd rather you be able to just do it yourself, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. that's what decriminalization does. And that's kind of what I'm waiting for is, like, I've been really wanting to start growing. Like, I yeah. grow cannabis. But I've been really kind of waiting for that decriminalization because, totally. like, yes, it's decriminalized in Denver, but we live in Boulder. It's different. And I'm just, I don't yeah. know, it would definitely make me more comfortable. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. What I think would be cool is, like, mushroom, like mushrooms, finding a way that mushrooms can help us, like, filter water naturally so that, pe- yeah. like, everyday people can filter water more easily. Yeah, so microfiltration, that's an idea that actually is pretty cool. And I'm actually kind of working on an idea that utilizes that, not like as the direct purpose oh, okay. or function. Can you but tell it, us about it? Uh, not right now, but maybe in the okay. next time. <laughs> I like to develop it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, my, microfiltration is really interesting because like mushrooms, for instance, they fight off other competitors, just like any other living form. Mm -hmm. And so what's unique about them is like the roots or hyphae, mycelium, whatever you want to call it, you know, the roots of a plant are pretty macroscopic, you know, millimeters big, whereas, you know, hyphae of mycelium, we're talking, you know, micrometers, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) very nanometers, like very, very small. Mm -hmm. So you weave this together into like a coarse material or like a web or straw you know, it basically makes this nice sponge that, and, you know, when the fungus is alive, it's actually uh, feeding off of tablets, you know, which are byproducts that actually have antibacterial, ac- antiviral, antifungal wow. properties because, you know, they're trying to compete to live, mm-hmm. you know, as an organism. So it's kind of cool to think that that wow. may be the thing. So like, you know, water runoff, you know, gray water, still water, whatever, uh-huh. uh, or even... Um, pesticides and that like water runoff from agriculture yeah. yeah that is that i actually firmly think might be a really good use of it probably shouldn't eat the mushrooms no but <laughs> you know what those mushrooms will do reproduce and they'll reproduce more adaptable mushrooms to eat that stuff yeah oh. and that's pretty important to think about because that's something that you know a we use <laughs> we're not going to get rid of fields and agriculture and stuff like that today but if we can think of ways to like keep those food systems alive while we introduce right. and integrate other ones yeah. while not killing ourselves, fingers crossed. That's uh-huh. that's the you know that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the the stuff right there, the cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah. man, cleaning water that's disgusting. <laughs> like that's a that's a huge issue, and it's hard. God, yeah, man. and but yet yeah, I heard the other day that like. Sixty percent of the water from the Colorado River goes to agriculture, like for the whole like western part of the country. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's kind of funny. I was looking at like just traveling around Colorado, and I was looking on the Colorado Gov site. It's like, yeah, one of the few natural lakes in Colorado. And like when I looked it up, there's there's like hardly actually any natural lakes. Yeah. And then you start to look at like how many man-made lakes there are, Boulder Reservoir, so on and so forth. All of it is completely, as you said, yeah. just devoted to agriculture. And yeah. you know, it, it's a wonder <laughs> why we can't keep much of our soil and uh, you know fertility, and probably maybe why we're in a drought. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You take water from you know the hydro hydrological system. You don't have plants. You don't have yeah. <laughs> things that can actually hold soil together. Mm-hmm. And so things don't fend for themselves as easily. Yeah. It's kind of sad, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, something that, like, I think it was Zach was talking about that they're, like, inoculating, you know, soil with mycelium to make, um, like, along with plants in agriculture yep. so that they're able to tap into the yeah. the water from from the fungi. <laughs> yeah, and actually, well, I'll give you a little taster now. That's basically kind of what I'm working on. I'm working oh, on okay. uh, cool. basically integrating fungi 
in a passive way to modern agricultural agriculture and farming with reducing waste by tons, tons, and wow. tons. Wow, water waste specifically, or water waste, plastic waste is the big thing, and muscular waste. I'm trying okay. to reduce labor too, which is one of the bigger things because you oh, know okay. think think of all think of all the machines we made to reduce labor rather than like thinking of a more effective product right. rather than yeah. you know a more effective machine that does it. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. that's, I want to think of something more uh, okay, effective cool. rather than holistically effective. Yeah, exactly. Cause I okay. mean, cause I mean, if you're going up to the, you know, everyday commercial farmer, they have done this for the last three generations. It's going to be hard for you to make a good point for them to change their life yeah. in order for the better. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, honestly, they're making their living by basically killing the ecosystem and monoculturing. Mm-hmm. But we need to make that profitable and easy and accessible because otherwise it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know? So we need, we need to be able to, like Zach was talking about, pre-inoculated plants. You know? If we can have mycorrhizal forests you know, that ever since, like if everyone just inoculated one bag of one sapling, mm-hmm. that would probably provide tons of mushrooms in the forest that we plant. But wow. because we're not... Planting effectively, for instance, we lose 75% of our plants because, you know why? They're not resistant to a lot of the pathogens yeah. because the mycelium isn't established. Oh, wow. And so one trouble leads to another, leads to another. Yeah. So it's like even if you're going out there and, like, planting trees. It does it's, nothing. It's, like, only, <laughs> only like, not even half you're of them are going to survive. You're actually wasting energy. Well, yeah, you're actually wow. wa- you're killing more things than you are saving them. Oh, my god. Which is actually really sad. And wow, so yeah. and that shows you the urgency of the issue is, like, we kind of fucked <laughs> yeah <laughs> and not, not in a bad way but like we need to think of different ways because what's working right now just isn't working yeah you know that's the cool thing about mushrooms is you start to see oh everything is in relationship to itself it we just need to tap into these relationships just like we're doing internally while we're uh, on a mushroom experience mm-hmm. We need to externalize that into the world and see all the relationships we can build in the world so that we can work as a more cohesive community of mm-hmm. organisms. That's what we are. Life wouldn't exist otherwise. It's just our greed oftentimes uh, yeah. <laughs> dissociates uh, our, our place in the world. Um, but I don't think it's rocket science, and that's what gives me hope. And I think, I think a lot of people with mushrooms are starting to see that. You, know? you don't have the tree without the mushroom. Or you don't have the soil without the mushroom. You don't have, you know, the water without a mushroom. Or you don't have whatever it may be. Everything's so interdependent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, that makes me, like, excited. Like, I'm, like, still feeling defeated, but I I have hope. Yeah, I think it's good to have mixed feelings about that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's just, like, how do we get all these people to catch on? Because there's so much money that they already have invested. And it's all these lobbyists that have been paid by... Big tobacco, big pharma. Everyone just needs to grow their own medicine. Yeah. That's, like I said, starting like, here. Just, if you grow one meal a week by yourself, you know, who knows? That's mm-hmm. a big change. Yeah, Monsanto it, is getting well, yeah, that, it, six sevenths of what they were. Exactly. Work. That's why boycotts worked. Mm-hmm. You know, what if we boycotted in a proactive way yeah. rather than a reactive way? Start from within. And, you know, if you can grow your own tomatoes and make your own salsa, and everyone did that. You know, Monsanto's down's now. like thirty million dollars. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a lot. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot, a yeah. lot. And you just devalued them as a business so much that, you yeah. know, they may value their workers more because of that. Who knows? Mm. Things get interesting. <laughs> or they <laughs> you know, like cut we keep our divisions. Yeah, and- <laughs> exactly. Cause we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, maybe like COVID, people start to do things outside of that that, yeah. you know. I, we don't need to be with these people I don't anymore. need to sell my soul to Monsanto to exactly. make a living. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, or, and that's and the it's thing. Like every dollar we spend is literally a vote to keep these people going. Yeah, we convince so ourselves stop that. giving them money. <laughs> yep. I mean, Leo Tolstoy, one of the best people out there, he's like, if you, it blows my mind that humans won't stop doing the very thing that like kills them. We just can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine if we could just stop shopping for a week. All of these places. What if we just didn't go to Kroger or King Supers or whatever yeah. or Walmart for a week? They would be screwed. 
Yeah, everyone boycott Amazon <laughs> yeah. for one week. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, like, exactly. And imagine if we did that, oh. you know, instead of, instead of going to work, we built a garden. You know, mm-hmm. instead of going to work, we cooked a dinner together. Totally. Instead of buying gas, you, like, made ethanol in your backyard. Yeah. Your or waste. just, like, rode a bike instead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make your own ethanol. <laughs> hey, I I stand by it. <laughs> oh my! I feel like it's that would doable. get dangerous really quick. <laughs> Some other questions that I had is like kind of back to like the decriminalization and legalization of psilocybin. SK sent me a really interesting article that CPR put out. That it's like and you know NPR's yeah. Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, Colorado Public Radio. Um, they, we love their stuff. Shout out. Um, Huge fan. It was like going over the pros and cons. And obviously there is these people that are like, it's going to help so many people. Like there's going to be clinics that can actually help people. And then there's like this mom whose like daughter got killed because her and her boyfriend took like a hero dose. And then he like shot her and killed himself. So Mm. then it's like, what do you say to like? Yeah. Those types of people. Oh, yeah, I mean... And, like, what are your views on, like, yeah, like, pros and cons of it being legalized, I guess? Yeah, and... Yeah, it, it's a hard question, because, A, psychedelics are definitely not for everyone. Yeah. And... But sadly, you're also going to get these stories no matter what. Yeah, and especially sa- with how many people we have in our country. Yeah, and... Yeah, and sadly... and this, this I don't want to make this sound bad at all, but, you know, in a situation like that, you're taking seven, five to seven grams of mushrooms... And you shoot someone. My question is, what are the underlying mental problems beforehand? Right. It's a, it's usually <laughs> like they have like and, a whatever predisposition condition of like bipolar or schizophrenia, or antisocial disorder, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know that's and the mushrooms a, brought it out. Yeah, and that's definitely asking for a pretty chaotic experience, and especially not a clinical way. Um, yeah. So. Clinics would definitely be really great because you have people supervising. It's in like, but maybe you can't have a gun. What? Probably. Right? Yeah, but I mean, I don't think most people are. I don't think ninety ninety percent think of people so, yeah. are thinking of you know committing suicide or shooting someone on shrooms. Yeah, but I also think you know ninety percent of people don't want to be in a clinic taking mushrooms. Yeah. Also true. You know. It's kind of weird to be able to, you know, I want to be get an IV, IV of mushrooms. And then you have this doctor asking you how you feel. You don't really know. You're having this very personal experience. You're probably experiencing yeah. some past trauma, some ecstasy, some stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, definitely at times, you probably don't even know who the person is. Mm-hmm. You know, I've definitely had times where I'm hallucinating very hard. I'm like, I can't tell who you are. I don't know who you are. Yeah. And, you know, I've lost my time for <laughs> aspect of time. And so that can put someone into, a, you know, a, a fright. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so at that point, is the clinic doing much better? Or yeah. so is the, you know, decriminalization True. route where people can just have access in their own setting? Yeah. You know, which is better? Is that the way that the legislation, like, frames the clinics? Is that, like, you have to use it there, or is it just an option? And it's, like, a dispensary? I think it's kind of, yeah, I think it's a dispensary option. Okay, Um, because I read something that, like, all residents of Colorado over 21 can go in. Um, Like, I don't think there's, like, I think with a valid ID, like, there's no restrictions on who can go in Yeah. Well, I don't... but I it, don't. Well, it's going to be clinically based, so this has to okay. this has to be doctor diagnosed, and you have to be prescribed it. Okay. Like yeah, this isn't recreational. Yeah, framework. this. Okay. Yeah, do you have to get a script for this and uh, be so referred for? So, like, what they're for doing it. for okay. ketamine, basically. Yeah, except and I, yeah, and I'd imagine the stipulations are probably a bit higher to okay. do this, just because I think I don't think the toxic toxic toxicology like effects or as bad as, like, ketamine or marijuana, mm. but the psychological effects definitely could be. So I think that's why we have to, okay, you know, tread <laughs> lightly. <laughs> you know, I have to also think, like, you know, we're still coming off, like, the war of drugs, and, like, LSD is, like, the, like, devil's drug and so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah. So we're still battling some of these, like, preconceived notions of hysteria versus this culture. Totally. Yeah. The so, truth getting out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, you know, I don't think it's going to be that bad. It, we're going to have to work through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 
It's all about education. Yeah. 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 And I think the more we talk about it, you know, I didn't know that was an option, so to speak. You know, like maybe I could just like, it would be nice to actually just go to a friend rather than a doctor. Most people don't think of that, you know, Mm -hmm. and that is nice to be quite honest. You know, people come to me, ask me like, oh, is this the right thing? Should I take this? How much should I take? You know, that gives me a lot of confidence in them to take it and have a good time, have Mm -hmm. a, like a a beneficial time on it because they know they're safe doing it. Yeah. Whereas I don't know, and I think we even have this fear of doctors telling us stuff that we don't actually believe them too. Yeah. You know, doctors are there for our money and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and that might come up in a clinical setting and stuff like that. Do I trust my practitioner? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, can I be honest with them during this? Oh, Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do they have knowledge that is actually yeah. Or are they going to like report you if you're a mother or a fa- like a single like father? Exactly. There's if, an ethical yeah. obligation there There's too. There's so maybe. much then at play, I feel like. Yeah. And I'm honestly more leaning towards the idea of like open access to therapy after an experience. Mm. Oh, so okay. we can have open cool. access to, to the drug, but I don't think it's very – advisable to have someone administer it oversee you especially when it's an experience that is very much shaped upon what you think of it yeah yeah it's so it's all I, your also perception. environmental too exactly exactly so i think a lot of that you know take all let you have your experience go to the psychologist psychiatrist afterwards to evaluate it interpret it mm-hmm. so they can understand a little bit more mm-hmm. yeah that makes and sense. i think and i think the experience was probably going to be more productive that way because you're doing it yourself you know yeah. i think that's part of the trip is like no simple highway you can only do it on your own yeah yeah you know I, I think there's something about like if we're gonna overhaul mental health then like let's overhaul mental health and like use this as a tool in addition to so many other things like free access to maybe not even necessarily free but access to psychologists after the fact and yeah or hell or even just therapy we love therapy or, or even a crisis hotline during like you know oh, stuff yeah. like that enable people to have the experience at home to the best of their quality but give them the stuff the accommodations that could make that you know yeah. if you are very scared if you think you are actually dying you know, advise them to call. Maybe that's a good thing. We love that. Well, we normally wrap things up with like, with, well, we, two questions, but we're going to, they're they're like cannabis specific. Right. So <laughs> it, you don't have to really answer, but it could be mushroom related too. Okay. So right. if you could consume, we used to say cannabis, but it could be mushrooms with anyone um, alive or dead. Uh, or fictional. Or fictional, but it can't be family. <laughs> Who would it be and why? I, I think probably Aristotle, to be quite oh, honest. Oh, cool. Wow, That's a good one. Yeah. I would definitely do some drugs with Aristotle. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, it's interesting because the guy's base, his philosophy has stood the test of time. Like, we are yeah. basically understanding biology, physics, and all this stuff, and microbiology, even about fungi. And he knew that. And, <laughs> We're still saying the same shit he wow. said. <laughs> and like So it's like, hey, hey, nothing's changed, buddy. Yeah. Wow. And they're not in like mushrooms and uh, you know, indulging in cannabis was definitely part of the culture. So it'd be oh, really interesting so to see how cool. they did it back then. You yeah. Know? You know, maybe they're rolling like a monster blunt out of like huge bamboo leaves or something like that. <laughs> right. I don't know. Like be pretty wicked. Like, what whips they out do? his yeah. mycology book. And yeah. It's just like three thousand well, years more than we have. Yeah. Well, I mean the was it the Lucian Mm. Uh, there's a basically like a guild the Lucian guild that they would go take mushrooms and just go for like five days okay. to a week and just like in this temple what so I'm I'm kind of in the the crowd I'm like let's go to what's in that temple that's yeah, so really <laughs> cool yeah it's so time for some neo Lucian uh, activities <laughs> exactly that's so sick good one yeah that's a good one it's yeah. pretty cool Sweet. Oh, I guess, well, the other one we ask is, like, what do you see of the future of the cannabis industry? But we'll ask you, what do you see of the future of the mushroom industry? Like, psilocybin or culinary or personal growth, like yeah. what you're saying? Well, I mean, I think culinarily, I think it's going to, we're going to keep on growing. I mean, even in the five years that I've grown, I've seen more mushrooms that I never knew were able to be grown than ever. 
And, you know, that's starting to make its way into pop culture more and more and more. Mm-hmm. You know, mushrooms in, in general are, you know. That's great. And so that's cool. But also, you know, I think the shroom industry is going to be coming to a pretty cool place. Uh, yeah. Pharmacologically, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff in mushrooms that we don't necessarily know about, like the bioassistine and those different chemicals may have different therapeutic effects. Wow. So I don't want to take it too much to the pharmaceutical point where, like, you know, that's why we get really isolated things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it could be very interesting that we can see this, like, you know, complements of each other and and why certain strains are better for certain things, like we notice in the Mm -hmm. cannabis industry. Yeah. I'm excited to see that an actual platform where the user can actually know more and experiment more. Yeah. It, it's going to be interesting to be able to like have the tag of psilocybin, bioassistine and all that stuff and to see how that affects you. Yeah. Yeah. That it seems like so there's cool. so much variety within. Yeah. I mean, there's tons. I mean, there's truffles or, I mean, there's over 200 psychedelic species alone. Wow. It, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we need to get in like tons. Like there's nice. two here in Col- two or three in here in Colorado. Oh. I used to, pick some on my college campus like it's pretty wild really? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah they're everywhere so that's the cool part about it is like we like and why kind of why i got into this is like we just don't know mm-hmm. and yeah. in terms of like the molecular biology that's going to come from understanding these things and it's going to be really cool we're going to have some yeah. cool medical advancements i'm excited to see that um where can people find you uh honestly I don't have a mushroom business going on right now, so blue collar dogs, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Blue without an E. But yeah. And then if you guys want to find me, message me on Facebook. I love doing this kind of stuff. Like awesome. I said, my name's Zane Marsh. You can find me. I have long long hair, so Hell yeah. <laughs> we'll post this photo of you too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And feel free to reach out if you guys want to learn how to grow or anything like that, have questions, how how to take an experience of it, whatever. I the psychology want to of forage it. Forage with you. At yes. Some point. My dogs know how to f- hunt oh, mushrooms. Cool. So that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And that's a that's a cool into the industry that I want to get into. Is, oh my god, you could literally train dogs people's dogs. To well, them. like for for, for instance, dogs, right? well, yeah, but like for instance, what we know, like a f- certain chemical in a certain mushroom is really good against cancer. Mm. I can train the dog to find that specific mushroom, go out into the f- wheel, wild, find it, bring it back, learn how to grow it, manufacture. Wow. Oh my Boom. god. That's wow. that's what I want to do with it at least. So that it's going to be pretty be cool. So <laughs> dope. Yeah, but I mean that's cool. definitely what's coming to the point of, you know, I have a yeah. friend that literally collects soil fungi for oncology research. Wow. Like that's really freaking cool and that's like where penicillin came from. Like a lot of these like pseudonomas are from the ground. We're like just like a tip of the iceberg. We don't we have no clue what's going to come yet. <laughs> It's gonna oh, it's gonna so be great cool. though. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be like going down a, a hill, just our hair going back, and we can't even take all the information that we're learning. <laughs> it's just like holy cow, what are we gonna do with this? <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna be a fun ride. Sweet, I'm so excited. Thanks for teaching us. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad thanks. you guys had me. It's been fun. Yeah, I love talking about it. If you can't tell, yeah, we'll <laughs> definitely have you back like after the election, and maybe we can talk more about yeah psilocybin businesses and yeah, totally. Other fun stuff. November 9th, things in the work. Yeah, Everyone seriously. vote. Be sure to vote. Yeah, yes. please vote. And, you and know. decriminalize mushrooms. Yeah, whatever it is. I'd rather you guys go, get out there and vote rather than doing nothing at all. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. At this point, just get out there. <laughs> yes, yeah. well said. <laughs> well, thank you again. No problem. And um, as always, stay, stay high. high.